It's time for our next FM23 Wunderkid tier list and today we are going to be focusing on the best Wunderkid defenders in the game. We're going to be ranking them from the GOATs to the players that are completely unusable. So let's take a look at our selection today. We have got 20 different players, left backs, right backs and centre backs. I was going to do a video for just centre backs and just full backs but to be honest full backs this year there's not that much good variety. So I've got 10 centre backs, 5 left backs and 5 right backs from the FM. FM scout list. For those who want it as well, the names of all of these players in order will be in the description down below in order of me ranking them in this video. So if you need the pronunciation or the written version of the name, it will be down there in the description. And before we get started with our rankings, if you could smash the like button if you've been enjoying this kind of content, we'd greatly appreciate it to let us know to do more in the future. I think we're maxed out right now in terms of we've done strikers, central midfielders, wingers and now defenders. I feel like we'll leave it at that for a little bit in the tier list rankings, but if you guys enjoy this enough, we'll definitely bring it back for a series either on FM24 or in a different variation, maybe with players that aren't just wonder kids in the game. So smash the like button to let us know you're enjoying it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well as we get close to 155k and comment down below your favorite wonder kid defender of FM23. Now with that being said, I've covered pretty much everything. Let's get started with our rankings. So our five tiers are GOAT, which will be reserved for one player, best of the rest, which are for the others that come close to GOAT but don't quite make it. Good is for those wonder kids that are, you know, good and they'll be good in your save if you pick them up and probably not too much more than that. Hype's gone are for those players that have maybe made their move already and therefore aren't really accessible or maybe their time's just kind of passed in terms of being that must-have wonder kid that we're looking for here. And then unusable will be those guys that have an inflated transfer fee or don't want to leave their clubs or something along those lines. The first one that I'm going to get out of the way nice and easy is Destiny. Odoje, who is playing for Udinese, but actually in the game is on loan from Tottenham because Tottenham have signed him in real life and loaned him back out to Udinese. Not only is he going to be there for a year and then likely at Tottenham for a year before he even wants to move, he also has a super high transfer fee because he's already in the Premier League and has already made that big move. So any chance of getting him will be circumstantial in your save if you happen to get lucky with Tottenham transfer listing him or something. So for me, because he's just not a wonder kid that you can go out and outright buy, or at least even by after a year or so, I'm going to put him in the unusable section. You might be able to get him on loan in your second season, but that might be the most that it goes. Odoje for me, good wonder kid as all of these players are. They're some of the best defender wonder kids from my FM scout list, but Odoje for me just isn't very usable. Next, we've got Bayer Leverkusen's Piero Hincape, an Ecuadorian defender, 20 years of age, who can play left back or centre back. Now, his transfer valuation is around £10 million or so, but he is 20 and attributes wise, compared to some of the others on this list, despite having good potential, there's just better options for me out there. And I wouldn't go as far as putting him in hype scum because he is still a decent option. But he's just a good wonder kid, nothing more than that. Piero Hincape of Bayer Leverkusen is our first introduction into the good tier. And now let's move on to our next player, who is Tino Livramento of Southampton. And speaking of Southampton, I've got a one-off rebuild video coming out with them tomorrow after this video goes live on my channel, which you can find linked in the description. We have other rebuilds on there. We do YouTube shorts on wonder kids that you might not have heard of and also a long-term series with Aberdeen. I'd really like it if you'd come over and check my channel out as we go. Go for 15,000 subscribers over there. I really think you'd enjoy the content, but he was a big part of our Southampton rebuild. And he is for sure one of the best right back options in the game. Usually I'd avoid putting him in best of arrest because he's not very accessible being at a Premier League club, but often you'll see Southampton go down. You might see him available for a smaller fee than you might expect. And I'd happily pay 30 odd million pounds for him. And I've seen him go for that kind of valuation after a year or so. And because there's not too much of a competition at right back this year, I'm going to put Livramento in the best of the rest, a player with a lot of potential. For the first few years, Chelsea do have a £40 million buyback clause on the young English right back, but he's a very good option and one of my favourites this year. When I do these videos, by the way, I am doing this on the fly, like I don't plan out my rankings as I go, so just bear that in mind. So you might see a bit of a discrepancy in terms of some tiers might be super crowded and some tiers might only have one or maybe even no players in. Next though, we have Enzo Boyomo, who I believe plays for a club called Albacete. They're a team in the Spanish divisions and Boyomo is a great pick because he is 20, much like Piero Hincape, but he's probably similar in terms of ability level and that 
out of everyone on this list, Boyomo is one of the cheapest, coming in at only two or three million pounds. If he had a bit more ability, he'd be in the best of the rest, but he is better than Hincape, in my opinion. Next, though, we have got Nathan Patterson. He's an Everton player and a good right back, but if you're comparing him to Tino Livermento, I feel like Livermento is the best option. He also usually comes quite pricey, does Patterson at Everton, and even if they go down, I've always struggled to actually get my hands on him. He has got a great personality. He's a model citizen with some good attributes, but usually at the start of your save, it's 40, 50 million pounds for him. And for that reason, at the age of 20, by the time you're actually able to go for him for a reasonable price, he's gonna be older than 20, and therefore I'm gonna put him in the hype's gone. Still a good option, but not one that we're all clambering to get our hands on straight away. Next, we have 19 year old Ukrainian centre-back Ilya Zabrani. He plays for Dynamo Kiev and he is a very, very good option. One of the best that there's been in the last few football managers. He's also not too expensive, about £10 million, but he will be leaving his club soon. I believe he signed for Bournemouth in real life, if I remember correctly. So when the new winter transfer update comes out in FM23, he'll have a move lined up already. But as of right now, for me, he is one of the best centre-backs that you can get. He might drop down into the good section later, but in terms of centre-backs, he's very good and a brilliant option. Next, we're moving on to 18-year-old Italian centre-back Diego Coppola. Obviously, Italy are a nation that have produced many great defenders, and there's a bunch in this list that we've got to come up to. Really physically dominant, brilliant in the air, six foot four at the age of 18, and whilst he can't pass very well, he is a top-tier centre-back option. And I think already, because of how many we're going to end up with in best of the rest, I'm actually going to drop Zabrani down into the really high part of the good section. Whoever's closest to the left is better in my eyes, and for that reason, I'm putting Coppola up here. He's about a year younger than Zabrani, probably more ability, I'd say. Similar price point as well, but you're getting a player who's already got Serie A experience in Coppola, and for that reason, he is going in my best of the rest section. Now we have Josco Gavardio, who is a brilliant centre-back, or even a left-back if you want him. There is no denying that. He's nearly getting out of that age of being able to be a wonder kid, or at least classed as a wonder kid in-game, but he is still uber talented and has most of the clubs in Europe drooling after him, especially after the World Cup and his performances for Croatia. However, at Leipzig, he's valued at around £60 million in the game. And for that reason, unless you're a huge team, I don't think he's possible to sign. I mean, of course, he is technically in every save. Football manager is very circumstantial. But realistically, unless you're a really high level club, Gavardio just isn't a viable option. Not many teams are going to have that much money in the budget. So he's not that must sign wonder kid that we're looking for. And for now, he's going to go in the unusable section. And that's not to say I don't think Gavardio is good because I I think in terms of talent, he's probably got the most out of anyone on this list. So I do think he's great. He's just very expensive. I'm going to skip past this player for now and move on to Devine Wrench of Ajax. Now this Dutchman can play right back, centre back, left back, defensive midfield, central midfield. He is super versatile and doesn't cost the world about £10 million. But in terms of ability, he's now 19 years of age and probably doesn't have that much more than some of the other players on this list. He does have some really good mental attributes as well as physical ones for his age that he can really develop but I just don't see him as that must-have wonder kid anymore he's a good wonder kid but that's about it for me for the vine wrench next I'll be doing Nuno Mensch of PSG now this left back is a phenomenal talent and has been for years in FM but once he made that move in FM to PSG which he did a year or a couple years ago now at this stage he just isn't a viable solution anymore he's a really good option one of the best you can get but unless PSG decides to transfer list him he's a PSG player there's not many teams that could pinch a starter player from PSG without having to pay a huge amount of money. So for me, he's going in the unusable section. Next, I'm going to do Tangai Nianzu of Sevilla, formerly of Bayern Munich and a great option to sign last year. But the Frenchman is now 20. He's at his new club, so you won't be able to sign him for a year or so. They paid a pretty sizable amount for him. So now his transfer valuation is even more at 30 or 40 million. And he's not completely unusable. You can definitely get him after a year or so. He will cost a fair bit, but for me, he's just another one in that hype's gone section. No one's really rushing to sign Nianzu anymore the way that we used to when he was at Bayern, but still a brilliant centre-back to check out for sure. Next, we have Benfica's Brazilian centre-back Morato, who is a brilliant option. He'll cost you somewhere between 15 and 20 million pounds from Benfica. He has a fixed potential rating, so you know exactly how good he could get in every save. And he also has bags of 
talent straight away. Now he's 20 years of age at the start of your save, but he can definitely play for some of the biggest sides in the world if you'd like to go for him. I think there's better options in this list, but in terms of someone who's already a ready-built player for most teams in the world, Morato is definitely one of them, and I'm going to put him in the good section, just behind or maybe equal with Ilya Zabrani, but just for the sake of it, let's put him behind of Zabrani there. And there is Morato, but there is a better centre-back at Benfica that we'll get to. But next, we're going to do Malik Thior. I don't know how you pronounce it. He plays for AC Milan. I believe they signed him from Shakhtar very recently. And for that reason, I just don't think he's a very good option anymore. He's only recently signed for Milan. They'll try and loan him out and probably sell him within a few years. He's a really powerful centre-back, six foot four, with great physical attributes and could definitely get to a level where he could play for AC Milan but I just feel like he's already at a pretty big club he's only just moved as well so you've got to wait a little bit before you sign him and he's just another one where look he's a good wonder kid but that's pretty much it and even then maybe he slots right into the hype's gone section it might be too late for Malik Thior but I think for now we'll just put him lower down on the good section again remember all of these players no matter where they are are the best wonder kid defenders in the game. I've obviously left a few names out, of course, but in terms of general talent and potential ability, these guys are some of the best. So even being the worst in the good section still makes Malik Thior a very, very good player. Next, we have one of the highest potential right backs in FM23. It's Jose Angel Carmona, a recent signing for Sevilla. He plays for Sevilla. He's 20 years of age and look, he's fine. But at the start of your game, he's got decent attributes and is valued at a pretty high fee of about 30, 40 million. Even if you've got a cut price on that, at the end of the day, there's better options out there. If we were comparing him to, say, Divine Wrench up there, I feel like Wrench is the better option, and I just wouldn't be going out of my way to try and sign Jose Angel Carmona. So for me, he's just going to sit in the hype's gone section. Good wonder kid, decent, better options out there, already at Sevilla, a major club with a really high transfer fee, so he can stay there. Next, we have Girona's Miguel Gutierrez, a left-back with a fixed potential rating. He starts off at 20 years of age, but he has bags of talent already, and can be signed for under 10 million. He is a complete left back, a brilliant cross river football, and one of the best that you can sign, in my opinion, for that left back spot. Brilliant mentally and physically. He reminds me of what Jose Gaia used to be like in FM. I say he used to be like, Jose Gaia is still amazing, but when he was younger and you used to be able to sign him, you were set up for life at left back. And Miguel Gutierrez is very similar for me. A brilliant attacking threat. Definitely one of the best you can get in my eye. So he is going in best of the rest. Another great great 20 year old left back is the Polish international Nikola Zalewski who plays for Roma and can play a variety of positions whether that's left back wing back or even as a left winger now he's uber talented either footed and won't cost you a crazy amount either at about 15 million he has interest at the start of most saves from a big club usually I see it's Arsenal that want him and he is a great talent one of the best you can get for me him and Miguel Gutierrez are very closely matched but I think Gutierrez just edges it for me but Zalewski is still a top option and someone to definitely keep an eye out for. And now we're down to our final four. We've only got one fullback left though, three are centre backs. So let's finish off our fullbacks with Martin Fernandez, one of the best young right backs in the game in terms of potential. Starts off at 16 years of age at Porto and doesn't cost you so much with about £2 million being his price point. He has a lot of ability once he's grown, but at the start of your save, he's not incredible, but he can become really good. I've done a wonder kid to superstar on him on the channel, so make sure you go check that out if you haven't already. But I just feel like there are better options out there. I mean, for how young he is, he's obviously very talented and he can go really far, but it takes a lot of development to get him to that level. So for me, he's a good wonder kid. Not too much more than that. And now we are into our final three players. Make sure you hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video and the series as a whole. If you haven't checked out the other episodes, make sure you go ahead and do so. But we've got three of my favorites left. This is Antonio Silva. This is Scalvini. And this is Caleb Ocoli. And I think I'll do him first. Now, Caleb is 20 years of age. He's a very strong physical option, an Italian centre-back with a bunch of talent who will cost you around £20 million. Whilst he isn't very good at the ball-playing side of things, he's a brilliant out-and-out -out defender. But for me, if I'm comparing him to Diego Coppola, who we looked at earlier, I feel like because Coppola's a couple years younger and cheaper too, that Okoli can't be on the same level because I feel like at 20 years of age, when Coppola gets there, after a couple years of development, he might even blow Okoli out the wall. Water. So for me, a good centre-back, one of the best, 
but there are a few better options. Now we have the big battle, Antonio Silva and Giorgio Scalvini. Let's start with Giorgio Scalvini of Atalanta, another great young centre-back at Atalanta. He's 18 years of age, will cost about 20 five million pounds and has a lot of ability decent ball player a very good defender a physical presence who could lead your defensive line for years to come a brilliant option but whether he makes go is another question for me i definitely think he's one of the best center backs you can get but because he's quite pricey i'm gonna bring him down into best of the rest but that might be a bit contradictory because then I've got Antonio Silva who is a phenomenal centre back he's 18 years of age plays for Benfica a brilliant mental prospect as well as being great physically he's also six foot two and his technical attributes are brilliant not only can he defend well he can also pass at a very high level and he's got a super high ceiling and can go on to be one of the best centre backs in the world but there's a plot twist for me because he can cost about 35 million pounds it's a bit pricey to class him as the GOAT option in terms of Wonder Kids. And even though maybe in terms of talent, he's the GOAT option, if we're factoring in all of our reasons to find the most must-have centre-back in the whole game, I'm tempted to drop him down just because of that price point, because I feel like it rules a lot of teams out from being able to get him. And for that reason, I think a player from earlier is going to take the GOAT spot. As I said, I haven't planned this out. I haven't already thought of my rankings before this video. But just so you know, I've had Football Manager here the whole time looking at players' attributes and price points just to get a feel of whether they'd be a good option or not. And I think just looking at Diego Coppola, it's hard for me to argue that he wouldn't be the GOAT purely because he's just under £10 million. He's got a lot of ability. He's still very young. And yes, there might be a few attributes here or there that Silva has better or Scalvini has better. This guy's costing you £10 million. The others are costing you double, if not triple that. So for that reason, Diego Coppola is my GOAT wonder kid. Fairly affordable, great potential, great ability, and playing at a club where hopefully you're able to snatch him from. Verona are a big club, of course, but not as big as some of the clubs that you may be managing. So you might be able to get your hands on him. So there is our GOAT. That's my rankings, though. Let me know if you think I've got any of these wrong. Who would you have had in? Who would you have taken out? Who would you have moved? Let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching this series. I've really enjoyed making it. Something a little bit different on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. And finally, come check out my channel in the description if you want to see more Let's Play style content of FM23. But most of all, have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.